Okay, for my quick tip, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of this performance meter. I actually got a webinar coming up in the next month or two on how to build this entire project, but I just want to kind of highlight a, a, a way that we can use sliders to help use for performance meters rather than having to build out a bunch of extra triggers and variables to evaluate what the current score is and then change the color of each of the bar. We could just use a slider that's tied to a variable. In this case, it's tied to the current percentage. So whatever the current percentage is, wherever that custom variable is, the slider will automatically move to that point on the, on the slide. So it's a really efficient way to build the performance meter without having to do a lot of extra, extra work. So what I mean by the, the changing all of the graphics, I have another example right here. And this one is, actually I need to refresh because I think they're using the same variable. <laughs> so hold on, let me do this. I could have had a variable clear the timeline, which would probably be a good idea. So let's start on this one. So in this case, we have the, the meter up top. And as we make a choice, it's going to change the state of the meter based on that value. So it's a few extra triggers each time to make that happen. I mean, you could put them on the slide master so you're not losing all your time that way but we're just highlighting the part. But let me show you what I'm doing with the, with the slider here. So the idea is I'm just working with, at, at least starting right here, with just regular free form slides. So you can see that I have my form view set up and I have my questions selected with the question and score. However, I'm gonna have to create my own variables to track this. And the reason being, if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, the, the built-in result slides, which is what we have right here, does include a quiz score percent option. You can see that right there. If I, whoops, if I highlight it, say reference, and you see built-in, and then down here we have quiz score percent. However, that percent is based on all of the questions being answered. So when I answer only one question, that percentage represents if I only it would only account for one slide, but yet it assumes all the slides have been answered. And I can demonstrate this by just copying this, and this is something you could add yourself. But I'll just come up here. I'm going to paste this just so you can see as the score is is it changes and with the result slide. So Control C, and I'm just going to multi-select the remaining three slides and paste. So that just pastes that quickly on each slide. I probably should have found the slide master just to save time. But if I preview this, I want to show you how this doesn't help us for this type of example. So we actually have to do our own calculations. As an example of where Storyline does so much work for us, but if we need more, we can certainly get there. We just have to, we have to build it ourselves. So let's just skip let this preview. Okay, so you can see the point value 10, five and one points. And if I answer this first one and click submit, yeah, I got it correct, and I'm on the next slide. This should say 100% because I answered the first one and got the maximum point value, but it's assuming that only one of these questions, right, because only one out of the four questions has been answered, I basically have 25% correct. And if I select two and submit, I should still be at 100%, but now it shows 50%. So this is why the result slide shouldn't won't work for us. And so I can remove these. I don't have a fast way to remove them, so uh, Slide Master would have been easier. So let me show you how, how I put this thing together. I guess I don't have one there, one there, one there. There we go. All right. So the idea is we're going to create three variables to track the total points, the current percentage, and total points earned for each, each slide. So what I'm going to first going to do is I'm going to come back into my free form, and I want to just remove the feedback just to make this go faster. We could have feedback. That totally works but I just don't want to show anything on those slide layers because uh, I just want to keep this moving a little bit faster. Scoring by choice, I certainly want because that gives me the 10, five and one for the result slides. So if I'm submitting this to an LMS, then I certainly want Storyline managing those points for me. But to show the progress meter, I'm going to have to also just concurrently calculate the variables so I can work, so I can work with them here in Storyline. Now I'm going to get rid of the rest, the last three slides. So in Storyline, we always just want to get one of these questions correct, and then we can duplicate and then make those those modifications. Okay, so here's here's how it works. Let me I actually have the calculations off here. Do a slide, and so the idea is we just need to calculate calculate the current percentage. So that's the that's the challenge. That's what we don't have in Storyline that we have access to is a current percentage. So we want to be able to divide the total points earned 
uh, at the, on each slide level by the total possible points. So if, if on slide one, the total possible points is 10, right? Because that's what the first question was. And then the learner gets 10 points, right? We want to be able to say they've got 100%, at least as far as that particular slide. And as we go through and they get different percentages, then we can show it. When we finish all of the questions, whatever percentage score we have here that we're calculating manually will be the same as what Storyline calculates, but Storyline's only displaying that final calculation for us. We want it at the slide level. So I have three variables created already for us. We have the current percentage, number variable, total points earned, and then total points possible right there. And if I actually open up my slide master, I've got these ready for us. Again, I'm doing a full webinar on this, so we'll, we'll walk through this a lot slower. And you can see kind of how this, how this all comes together. So here's the total points possible, and I have the reference variable for each right there. And so I want to create my first variable right here. So there, this one, this section to play with this, there's a couple different ways we can do it, but I want to set up at the slide level what the total points are for each slide. So one of the easiest ways is just to adjust a variable when the timeline first begins each time. So new trigger, yeah, new trigger, and then we'll say adjust variable. So we want to adjust the variable for the total points possible. So down here in the bottom, we have the adjust variable. And we'll say, okay, set the, well, we'll say set current points possible at a value of 10. So there's two ways you can tackle this. Probably the most efficient way is not to work with set, which essentially equals. If we use set, we'd have to change that value. We'd have to add new values each time, right? So if, if all the point values are maxed out at 10, then we would just have to say on slide one, set it equals 10. On slide two, set it equals to 20 and so on. Faster, <laughs> faster, much more efficient way would just be say, would just be say, would just be to say add 10 to total points each time the slide loads. So that'll incrementally increase our value of 10. And if we did change the value, let's say the next slide, slide two was, was 20, then we could change that individual value to 20 right there. All right, when the timeline starts on the slide. So that's gonna adjust our, I'll minimize my slide layers, we don't need them. That, that's gonna adjust the total points possible. If I preview this real quick, you'll see right away that that's what the variable should be showing us total points possible 10. So this is, you know, we're using this obviously for me, us as, as the storyline developers, so we can see what's happening here on the slide. Press escape. And now let's go ahead and just add the calculation. Now the first part is gonna be really easy. All we wanna do is add the point value for each of these, for the total points earned. So that's what the learner gets, what we're assigning the learner for each of them based on the object they select. So this first part should not be, uh, really too difficult. This is really basic variables. We're just adding a assigning a certain value for each button that's clicked. So here we go. We'll add the first one and then we'll be able to quickly duplicate it. We'll say adjust variable and the variable is here total points earned. We're not going to say set right. We're going to say add a value of 10 and then we'll say 10 and this time it'll be when user clicks. I'm just going to I'm going to tie everything to the submit button you could work with a couple different events, make this happen. I'm just going to wait till the learner clicks submit again, just to slow things down. No, not click outside when user clicks and we'll say the submit button, but we need to evaluate if this particular button is selected. So the condition is going to be if that object is, a, if best choice is set to selected and each of these buttons has a selected state. So that's the only way we're going to assign 10 points. We'll add 10 points to the total points earned is if they, when they click the submit button, if the state is selected. And because this is a button set, meaning that each of these buttons is part of the button set, only one of these can be selected at a time. All right, so there is my, I'm gonna ungroup that and I'm gonna copy this one. So control C, control V. And now all I need to do is just modify it for the good choice and the poor choice. So this time we'll say five points. And this again, this has a lot of variables here, but it gets easy it's easy because we're really just copying and pasting and then making changes here in line in the triggers panel. So we'll say this one would be the next one would be if good choice. And I'm going to copy control C, control V again. And then I'll say add one point to the total points earned with if the poor choice is selected. All right. So we can preview this real quick, just see how it looks. We should be okay. This is kind of the easy part. The next part we have just a few calculations. So it's a little bit more work. 10 points possible. If I select five, you know, this is, again, you can see where only one option is selected. It's not until I click submit 
and there we go so there's my five points so we now need to just calculate that percentage here real quick so I'm gonna come up here and let's minimize my slide again my slide is always adding the 10 points to each one and then we'll just do the calculation here real quick so let's go ahead and just do that calculation so what we want to do is we want to if we're looking at our calculation we need to need to set our current percentage to the variable uh, total points earned and then divide that by total points possible so here's what it looks like in storyline so first I'll add the trigger real quick and we're gonna say adjust variable and then we're gonna work with the current percentage so current percentage we're gonna set that value not to a value but to the variable so we'll set it to total points earned and rather than say yeah set set is right set make make which set basically means equal so make current percentage equal to the variable of total points earned and then we're gonna we're gonna divide that so when user clicks yeah we'll say when user clicks the submit button okay so there's my trigger there and then we'll add the next trigger where we divide it so next and that's just because storyline doesn't let us combine all of those calculations into a single trigger so each one of these operations has to be its own trigger and so it goes without saying but I'm gonna say it because it needs to be said and that is the trigger order absolutely absolutely matters right here so we want to get percentage current percentage and we're gonna divide that by the variable so variable you don't use most times we're just working with value but now we're working with variable and we'll say total points possible so total points possible and we don't want to make it equal we're gonna say divide that so divide current percentage by the total points possible when user clicks submit so we're just tying everything here to the submit button so when the learner clicks submit brrr, all these are gonna run from top from top to bottom and then finally to get that percentage we just need to multiply that value by a hundred so again new trigger and it's gonna be percentage current percentage and we're gonna just gonna multiply that by one bat 100 and then we just say not set but multiply so everything here when user clicks submit should work and so what I want to see is if I so let's say if we just did four questions we'll keep it simple right so if I get the first one correct I should show a a hundred percent current percentage doesn't mean I got a hundred percent on all the questions just means out of one out of one I should have 100 preview although I think I think my trigger order might be wrong because I don't know where my tr my submit interaction is let's try it so I'll say 10 and what I want to see that I want to see that show 100 okay cool so I just need to make sure submit I want to make that the last thing so it doesn't just automatically jump to the next slide before it mends those calculations trigger order absolutely matters let's try it one more time just see what's going on now the neat thing is is that if this all works which I think it will and that's 50 percent cool we're already finished this is it I can duplicate this slide you know as many times as I want and I've got my I've got my questions because each time the slide loads we're just adding another 10 points to the total points possible so you can it's totally scalable to, to, to create multiple versions of this now the last part what I thought was the neat part which is the fast way is and I'm just gonna go back to slide master and turn on my a little I have a really really bad looking slide uh, percentage I probably should break that out but it's just a little a graphic with gradients right here I'm gonna add a slider on top of it and hopefully you know that sliders can be absolutely customized to look really any way you like them to meaning you can absolutely you know customize this with your own dial I had that happy face that, that icon that changes different states based on the value but we can just make this maybe just one of the pointers right something like that it just stands out and I'll just drag it a little bit over there so it's there's not we're not looking for the aesthetics right here now the only thing I need to do is just assign the value of the slider because the slider has its own variable so if I go to the design tab up here on the ribbon you can see right here that it has the slider one variable what I'm gonna do is say nope I want to change it to current percentage so that is going to pull in whatever the learners current percentage is and then move that across the uh, across the uh, across that little color meter color zone right there all right so let's take a look at this yeah so that just want to double check that's, that's only says 10 so let's make that 100 so then we're actually working with percentages so there we go so that's 100 when that's what our maximum score could be 
Slide master and everything is turned on and it's already turned on now because slide master is going to go across each slide and let's just preview our scene and see how this looks. So this, if it works, which it will ultimately, whether I have to go back, it's a good use of sliders without having to do all those extra, those extra calculations. So I'll say best choice 10 points. That puts me at current percentage 100. And the reason it's not all the way over is I didn't stretch the slider to fit it. So we'll go to fit five points now. We're on slide, well, it still says slide one, but it's the second slide, second question. Come on here. And now we're at 75%, which looks about right, right here. And then so on. And now we're at 66. And then, well, that's really it. So we keep going. But that's how the slider can be used. You see how I can drag this though, right? And it's changing the percentage. So obviously we need to cover, we need to do something to prevent the learner from interacting with with that slider so we could put something like a hotspot right here on top of it, right? A hotspot, insert hotspot, but did I get a hotspot? Yeah, and then I'll just say right click and don't allow the learner to show that hand cursor. So that's the general idea right here in, in, in my class, which, which will be I think next month, if not in August, it will go through all the other details for customizing the different bars as well as changing the graphics like we did here for the for the, the slide the slider based on, you can see how it gets a little bit happier as we go over there. I think I have one more question. We uh, I didn't quite make it happy yet. Keep going, well, uh, there it goes. Nope, I think we're already through with the questions. That's why it's not working. But uh, just a little bit more design aesthetics there, but essentially this is the general idea for uh, using sliders as a performance meter in, in a storyline.